welcome to Laudate Domino. I am Anita Bonsa, your presenter. It's a new season in Lent and it calls for sober reflection, a lot of prayer, fasting and almsgiving. Join me as we reflect on the words of the Catholic hymnal number 100 and 64. It says, 40 days and 40 nights you were fasting in the wild. 40 days and 40 nights tempted and yet undefiled. Shall not we your sorrow share and from worldly joys abstain fasting with unceasing prayer strong with you to suffer Hey, lovely people of God, we are here once again in the unique season of Lent to prepare ourselves for the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and also renew our salvation through the blood that set us free from sins and its bondages from Calvary. As the hymn writer says, in the first stanza, he is drawing our attention towards the legacy Christ left behind throughout these 40 days and 40 nights where he first fasted in the wilderness before he embarked on his assignment. In spite of all the temptations that he never defiled by Satan, as our greatest role model exhibits in numerous ways on how we should live our lives, he is showing us again through this hymn the need for preparation before undertaking or performing any necessary task. If Jesus, the Son of God, needed to prepare himself for 40 days in the wilderness, then you and I need to make it a point to observe the Lenten period of 40 days and 40 nights of prayers, fasting, and almsgiving, which should benefit humanity and in the end glorify God. Reflecting on the second stanza, we are called to follow the divine example of our Lord Jesus Christ by partaking in this holy season, basically in prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, to prepare ourselves for the greatest feast of Easter, where God and sinners reconcile through the death and resurrection of Christ our Savior. I therefore entreat all of us to fasten with unceasing prayer as Christ did to fully enjoy a blessed Easter as well as renew our minds, souls, and bodies for the Christian journey. Lovely people of God, today we have for you the Saint Joseph Minor Basilica Choir from Elmina. They are going to give us four sets of songs, namely, Cross of Jesus, Cross of Sorrow, Just As I Am, Man of Sorrow, and then, Though Your Sins Be As Scarlet, They Shall Be As White As Snow. Let's listen to them.
we continue to reflect on the words of the Catholic hymnal 164, the third stanza says, Then if Satan on us press, flesh or spirit to assail, victor in the wilderness, grant we may not faint or fail. Poor and helpless souls as we are, we often find it difficult to go about our Christian assignments because of Satan who always wants us to fail and faint. It is obvious that even Jesus Christ was tempted in the wilderness. In the first and second stanzas, we are no exception. We should therefore strive with all zealousness to pray against the temptation of the devil so we do not fail and faint in our Lenten observance. Lovely people of God, let us be determined and persevere to enjoy a successful Lent in Jesus' name. Amen. Our choir will continue to give us four sets of songs, namely, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Mezekuma yao ashema, shemre Jesus osibdom, and then ma ampa moho. Let's all sing.
Lovely people of God, if you just tuned in, it's Laudate Domino. We will continue our reflection on the words of the Catholic Hymnal 164, the fourth and fifth stanzas, that says, So shall we have peace divine, holier gladness ours shall be. Round us too shall angels shine, such as served you faithfully. Keep, oh keep us, Saviour dear, ever constant by your side, that with you we may appear at the eternal Easter tide. People of God, it is a must for you and I to observe the season of Lent with humility before our God and abstinence from sin. Let us therefore continue to observe our Lent with total commitment so that, as the faith stanza says, our Holy Saviour, we will appear on the joyous day of Easter where we sing hallelujah with our resurrected Christ. Give me a big amen. We will now invite Reverend Father John Bernard Beecham to give us an exhortation. After he has, the choir would give us Makuchem Nye Mitem Jinafo and then Lamb of God, I come. Beloved in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you. We welcome another season, the season of Lent. And on Wednesday, I believe we all gathered in our various churches to receive ashes on our foreheads as we reminded ourselves that we are dust and unto dust we shall return. Ash Wednesday began the season of Lent and we ask ourselves what is this season? The word Lent comes from an old English word, what we call the Anglo-Saxon word, lectern. And this word means spring. Spring is a season in, in America and Europe, which is a season of growth, where plants begin to grow and the trees begin to develop leaves, new leaves. And so this association between the season of Lent and the season of spring in, in Europe and America is appropriate because just as spring is a season of growth, so is the season of Lent. Lent is a season of growth. Our focus is not so much so on our mourning our sins as in mourning our sins so as to grow in the spiritual life and so be able to overcome evil. That is our focus in the Lenten season. And so, my dear friends in Christ, as we talk about what Lenten, Lent, the Lenten season is, we ask ourselves, how did this season be, de, begin in the, in the church? And so, we, be, we give ourselves uh, a bit of a brief historical development of this season. This season is believed to have begun somewhere in the 4th century AD, at the beginning of the church. And there are two, two set, uh, practices of the church that give allusion to this season. The first one is uh, an ancient Pascal, Pascal feast whose preparation the church had a two-day fast. So it began with a fast of two days and later it spread to about 40 days, spread to 40 days. And so in, the, in AD 325, the Council of Nicaea discussed and promulgated this 40-day fast for Catechumens who were preparing for the sacrament of baptism. And in 360 AD, the Council of Laodicea made this obligatory and was extended to the whole church, which, was, which became an obligation for every Catholic to fast in preparation for the Paschal Feast. There is another practice, that is the, the practice of the order of the penitent where the, there was a public penance for those who had committed serious sins after baptism. 
and these sins include sins like apostasy, murder, adultery, and various sins of, 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 this, of this nature, which we call mortal sins, serious and grave sins. The, these people were given a, se a second chance for conversion to turn around and be reincorporated into, into the, the church. And they were given a 40-day fast. So they would fast for 40 days, and after these 40 days, they were incorporated into the, the Christian community. And this was the beginning of the Lenten season, 40 days. Why 40 days? We know Lent is a period of 40 days. So we ask ourselves, why 40? Why not 30? Why not 20? Why this 40? The number 40 has uh, biblical symbolism. And in the Bible, 40 represented discipline, it represented devotion, it represented preparation, and it represented a long period of time. These four, discipline, devotion, preparation, and a long period of time. And we have references of various references to 40 days and 40 years in scripture, references to the number 40. We come to Genesis chapter 7, the, the flood of, at the time of Noah. The flood lasted 40 days, and within 40 days, God had a purpose. Purpose of, of wiping out evil from the face of the earth, wiping out sin, so as to recreate the earth, the newness of the earth, and, and the innocence with which he created, he created humankind. And so he, he, he overpowered evil. We can also talk about the, the 40 days of Elijah before he came to the Mount of Horeb to encounter the Lord. He, he fasted for 40 days. That was a moment of preparation for that encounter with the Lord. Moses, when he went to the Mount Sinai to receive the, the tablet of stones upon which the, 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 the commandments were written, he, he was on the mountain, we are told, for 40 days. When Jonah preached to the people of Nineveh, he told them the Lord had given them 40 days to repent, 40. So these are allusions of 40 in the Old Testament, and the, the New Testament is also not left out. We, are, we know that Jesus Christ, before beginning his public ministry, he spent 40 days in the wilderness in preparation for that public ministry, after which he was tempted, and we will have that in today's Gospel reading from the Luke, Luke and Gospel. And then we, so when Jesus Christ died and rose again, he spent 40 days instructing his disciples further about the gospel message. So this is 40, a number that represents devotion, a number that represents discipline, a number that represents preparation, and a number that represents a long period of time. And that, with this spirit, we begin, we begin today the first Sunday in, in, in Lent. As we are presented, as usual, with three readings. The first reading from the 26th chapter of Deuteronomy, verse 4 to 10, where we have an act of confession and profession of faith. It is the context of a, the ritual act of the presentation of a thanksgiving offering, where we have the Jews presenting a thanksgiving offering, the first fruit in thanksgiving to God. And the, 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 the first reading tells us that when... when the priest has taken the, the basket. The presenter had to make a profession of faith. A profession that talked about what the Lord has done for the people of Israel, saving them from captivity in Egypt and bringing them to the promised land. So they profess that, that faith and devotion. Do not forget the devotion is the meaning of the number 40. And then we come to the second reading where Paul writes to the Romans in the 10th chapter of Rome, Rome, his letter to the Romans, verse 8 to 13. And again, he talks about the word of faith, the word, the word of faith that is near us, the word of faith that is in our, on, on our lips and in our hearts, the word of faith which we profess and that brings, that brings salvation to us. And then he ends by saying that for everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, will be saved. In the Gospel reading from the fourth chapter of Luke, we are presented with Jesus' encounter with the devil after his 40 days, that preparation for his public ministry. And the devil presents three points of temptation. Jesus is tempted. Even Jesus is tempted, and so we are also will be tempted. And so the devil presents three levels of temptation, beginning with hunger, because Jesus had fasted for 40 days and nights. 
and definitely he was hungry. And so he begins to tell him that if you, if you are the son of God, indeed you can turn these stones into bread and eat hunger. The next level of temptation that, that the devil presents to Jesus is when he took him up and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and he told him that if he would worship and bow to him he would give him all these and that these had been given to him the next the third temptation was for him to prove himself as the messiah the political messiah by jumping from the parapet of the temple and then coming and everybody will see that the lord has done something great but you know this the lord empowered and overpowered the devil my dear friends in christ today you want us to reflect on overcoming temptation overcoming temptation jesus has been tempted and definitely we know that temptation is not something that is new in our lives we shall all be tempted and we face temptation every moment every time every day of our lives you know temptation is very necessary in our lives because by temptation we grow in the spiritual life we say temptation is an incitement upon the the, the will to do evil no soldier can be can merit the accolade of bravery without having to face the battle lines it is only when he has been able to face the battle lines conquer and overpower that is when we can say this soldier is brave again in the spiritual life that is our life my dear friends we know that our catechism teaches us that we have three levels of the church we have the church triumphant those who have triumphed and are rejoicing in in heaven we have the church suffering, those who we believe are in purgatory and they are purging themselves of every sin. And then the church militant, the church militant. I want, I, I want us to focus on the word militant. Militant alluding to the fact that perhaps we are military members and we are doing battle on earth. And so our battle is with evil, hence the name church militant. And so that is where temptation comes in. Every day of our lives we are faced with temptations. And I want us to know that just that Jesus was tempted, he was tempted when he was hungry. Temptations come at the moment when we need. We have temptations of our age. As we grow up, every age, every year comes with its own temptations. As we look for employment, it comes with its temptation. As we go to school, it comes with its temptation. Whatever we do, it comes with its own temptation and we are faced with this temptation in our life. But how do we overpower this temptation? Temptation is in itself not a sin. But temptations come so that we overpower them and therefore make a step. They become a standpoint on which we grow in the spiritual life. They are not supposed to take control of us. Temptations are not supposed to overpower us. But temptations are for us to overpower them. And so when we go to the fourth chapter of Genesis, when Cain uh, invited his brother Abel to the sacrifice the lord told him that sin is crouching at your door and it's yours to overpower it and so my dear friends in christ how does jesus overpower the devil and how do we also do so in this lenten season the first thing is our faith the first thing is our faith our faith shows our devotion to the lord and it shows our total dependence on him and as it shows our dependence when we see that in the first reading as we recall what the lord has done for us and therefore we rely on him our faith in him will help us to overpower our temptation but then our faith we feed our faith with the word of god and so the study of the word of god is another thing we need to do in this lenten season so that every day every moment we live and communicate with the word and as the word lives with us we tend to overpower the, the, the temptations that come our way. And that is what we see that the Lord did. That every temptation that he was faced with, he had the word of God. It is the word of God that will help us in the face of temptations. And so I recommend these two practices for you. As we profess our faith, as we rely on our faith in God, God will help us overpower the, the uh, temptations and grow in this, in this Lenten season. And two, as the word of god communion with the word of god and then joining with the word of god and as we do that we do not forget the third thing which is prayer because all these happen in the context of prayer we pray with the word of god and we live the word of god prayer is what will make we invite god into our lives and we communicate with god so god is present to us and with his presence in our lives he pulls us in the moment of temptations and he helps us to live a happy life we pray 
that with this season of grace, we will grow in the spiritual life. And I end by praying with you what we read in the, in the, in the psalm. That be with me, O Lord, when I am in distress. This is, should be our prayer in this Lenten season. So the Lord will be with us, journey with us, and grant us favor. So we say that he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides in the shade of the Almighty says to the Lord, my refuge, my stronghold, my God in whom I trust. Upon you no evil shall fall, no plague approach your tent. For you has he commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you upon their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. On the lion and the viper you will tread, and trample the young lion and the serpent. Since he clings to me in love, I will free him. Protect him, for he knows my name. When he calls on me, I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. I will deliver him and give him glory. May the Lord be with you in your distress. And may he deliver you and give you glory, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
final basilica jump to four. I will feel Elmina. Yet I want to say, want to jump to say, yen in term jinafo, yen a kuchem, ah, oh yeah, yen yang kupon Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, I send you another do my hen, or the J, oh, or the J, ami. And who bring me, yen fan pipe, yen fan comte, yen fan doye, yen friend stray yen yame, na unte yen, on J and do. Yen sufre yimu. Ajon tofono waze enyuma oze chi oberiye. Wase. Enyeme na ma mensuro shi. Se yetumu boye nyame mpai. Na oji yendra. Yeru nsuro shi. And so lovely viewers until then. We say bye bye for now. Till we meet again on Laudati Domini.